just slowly <laughs> evolves. Everything just ends in SH. Like, every question ends in SH. Yeah. They're so stupid. I hate you. Uh, well, we're going to go with uh, pick number two, which is a bad inch. A bad inch. A bad inch. A bad inch. That's not started. Please don't start that. <laughs> no, we can start our own panel meta. No, 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 no. A teasy panel meta. I love it. Uh, uh, get me out. Okay, as far <laughs> <laughs> can you okay I, okay I need to stop talking about the RTZ panel meta because it's it's too much for me. As far as off players go that are good with CM, I think Ab Abaddon. Okay, Abaddon. 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 People keep tricking me. Abaddon is very high up there. He had some mana nurse shield, but if you can keep sustaining that shield with a CM more, he gets very annoying in lane. Not to mention he's one of the only off players can have a chance against Ogre Magi in lane. Yep. Ooh, Ooh. an OD early. Ooh, it's been banned second phase every time. Yeah. yeah. I, it used to be a pretty good counter because Yules is not good enough versus Abaddon. You need to deal with this one of two ways. One is proc it very early on in the fight. That's where we see a lot of TAs. Or two is just make him completely useless during his ulti. Naga Sleep, uh, Yule, Double Yules. OD, I think, is the best one, though. You don't need any items, and it's way longer than Yules. I, I, played against an ABBA and he got Yules twice in a row and he still blinked out afterwards. I was I just was like this this hero is just so ridiculous. But the OD Astral is a really good way to deal with borrow time. Yep. And there's no way for him to, to really heal during that phase too, so you can't you don't have this Abaddon coming back. Yeah, he's abandoned. just screwed. As a small note, if you're against an OD and you know he's about to astral you and you have a pipe, if you pop it, when you come out you can blink. So that's something that we might look for from Isis Isis this game. Hmm. I don't think that sounds Abaddon's really annoying. Have, have been going. Well, I mean, <laughs> it happens a surprising amount. Yeah. Like you know, the ODs. What usually happens is the ODs will astral and they'll have a range up and a full wand, mm -hmm. and apparently you can use it before the damage hits you, and you'll survive even though you have like zero HP before the the astral imprisonment goes wow. off. So the 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 proc ticks on the the range up, and you're able yeah. to heal off of that. This this is a good pick, I think. The OD, I think. It's one of TNC's better heroes. They last picked it in the game against uh, Digital Chaos, and they won that game. Mm -hmm. It's. I agree with Ben. I think it's one of the best versus Abaddon in the game. <laughs> uh, something that I used to talk a lot about versus Abaddon is that you want a stack hero. Heroes like Sark and OD, they make it so that these long sustained fights, you know, this, this Abaddon hero has a six second shield. He's very good in his long engagement. They make it so Abaddon can't take these long engagements or you're getting like 50 int and then you're just going to kill his entire team. So they're saying they should pick Slark. No, no, I think I think well, just one of the, don't one pick Sarko D, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a perfect game for it, but oh man, that's a rough one. Yeah, it's probably something that's been so favored in this uh, matchup hasn't been, well possibly could be banned here. But, but look, Slark has won both games this series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, both carries feel very comfortable on that hero. I will say I I do enjoy playing CM versus OD. I think CM is underrated as a hero. That, just for the Crystal Nova to slow the enemy's attack speed. You Crystal Nova them, you get them your ulti, they're not attacking at all. Yep. It's... Crystal Nova is a ridiculous spell, I just want to say that. <laughs> there goes the SF. Also, like the Clink Span. Coming into the series, I thought it was a hero that uh, Faceless would want to pick for black. I thought it was a hero that sort of could secure his own lane, like keep Sam H really far down, and then black could go and make space. I, I mm -hmm. Again, at the... I said, I really like it when Black can roam around and get these pick offs and use his team's. Like, Ice and Ice is a really annoying player. He gets a lot of vision and information on your team. You need someone like Black to be able to use it. Last game, Jabs did a good job of using it, but to be honest, uh, it's good when both your 1 and 2 can use Ice and Ice. Yep. Good lane matchup versus OD. What do you want to pick? Sniper? Ho ho? Ho ho, ha ha. Do you want to pick it this early, though? No. You know, I think I think that's something you want to be looking at definitely later. You, you have draft. the 10th pick. I, I think. Even though you see their mid, it would. You see their mid and their support who's gonna roam. I'm not sure. I think I would still want to wait a bit later. I do like this pick from Faceless, uh, taking away that Sam H uh, Nyx while giving it to yourself. Um, I'd support Nyx though. I guess. We'll I mean, we saw success with it last game. Mm -hmm. With CM, it's a lot better. I'm generally not sold on support Nyx. Uh, as Ben said, it is a lot better with CM because CM gives you a lot of that early game punch that Nyx lacks. Mm -hmm. and it's good for OD. Uh, to be honest, it's not the mana burn even that makes Nyx good for OD. It's the fact that if he Astros, you can hit your Carapace off it. Yep. If he Astros the Nyx, you can even press Carapace and hit him. So that's why I like versus OD on Nyx. Mana burn, you know, you can just buy a hood on OD. It's still a strong spell, but it's not going to ruin your game.
is the perfect Slark OD game. <laughs> It's a pretty good Slark OD game so yeah, far. I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh. Uh, Avenge. Avenge is a hero that... Something that OD does lack is building damage. I think, and objective taking, the Roshan. I think Avenge, I believe it's support right now. They could put a course, though. I guess that's another thing, you know. Your draft is still very open. Yep. Uh, so Avenge will give their lineup that building damage. To be honest, they have enough objective taking for the entire line with just Avenge and Ogre, which is always nice to have at the beginning of a draft. You never want to pigeonhole yourself into, I need this in my last two picks. Otherwise, you're going to see this great counter pick, but you can't pick it. Mm -hmm. I like Faceless to pick something aggressive here. I think a trend that we've seen in this series is that the aggressive team has been winning these games. They've been feeling very good. Yep. What's even good versus OD? Is, it, is the Nyx going to be enough to deal with it? Because it seems like their ABBA isn't going to be able to do too much. Even like saving versus Venchlop isn't going to be that that great. He's going to give a lot of sacks to OD. His ulti is not doing that well. What other heroes can they do to... Because that's really the only core that you see from Faceless. Yeah. Right? This fourth pick is quite hard to... Oh, so they take the Sark. They take the Sark, yeah. Very good versus Venge and Ogre. Uh, I really like OD versus Slark, but it's not that big a deal. There, If if you can get... You already have Nyx who stunned OD for like 5 seconds, so it shouldn't be too bad for him. And Army Knight. Oh, oh wow. god. Omni OD, we're back to Omni that. Omni OD. <laughs> that was a great Army Knight pick. Uh, yeah. If there's one counter to Abaddon in lane, it's gonna be an Army Knight. And Obviously, he matches up well with Slark in lane. Even though Ice 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 was sort of pressured early last game, we could see he really came back into that lane. And he was he was pretty farmed that game. Do you still think that it keeps the draft a little bit open? Or you just have to be playing Omni Knight in the offlane now? Mm, I haven't seen any Omni Knight supports. Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Maybe just a lack of levels now that I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm not sure He's why. He's good in lane, too, I think. He, he's not bad. His kill threat's a bit low, right? But he's definitely not bad in lane. He's, he's one of the heroes that, like, a Slark can't 1v1 versus Omni. Yeah. Oh, you, you mean for the offlane? No, he's uh, amazing yeah, as an offlane. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I, yeah, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah as an offlaner, I think he's just... He's like, it's him or LC who's the strongest offlaner wow. in lane. So, I, I don't see why, if I see a Slark, I would take Omni Knight and be like, I want to put you as support, where I can't utilize this annoying hammer guy. <laughs> <laughs> Very accurate description. I'm good with these. Final picks then. Finch. I think the Tinker was a good ban. Even though you have the Omni Knight, it's they good did it versus in game Tinker. one as well, didn't they? That the Tinker ban? Yeah. Oh, okay. Same so, place. I mean, Jabs' Tinker is actually really yeah, good. Really good. But uh, he's one of the heroes who will, ooh, who will uh, match up very well versus OD in lane. They have a lot of physical on TNC just out of those three heroes: the Venge, Ogre, and Troll. Mm -hmm. That's some overkill on attack speed. Yeah. Gonna be fast. Slark is generally mm -hmm. supposed to be good versus Troll, but I think they're not worried about him because their idea is that they can pressure him really hard with the Omni and the Ogre, and the OD will counter him into the mid late game. The other thing about Troll could, Warlord. Oh, sorry, they, go ahead. Can they aggro, actually? On Faceless? On or, TNC. Oh, TNC. TNC. I think Nyx is terrible I, as a support. CM likes yeah. a jungle. Yeah, that. I, I, I think like that's that. true. I think, to be honest, I think last game they probably looked at their lineup, their try lane, and be like, thank God we didn't get aggroed. Medusa. Is it Medusa, Medusa awful versus OD? No, Medusa crushes OD. Does she? Yes. Because OD suffers when he cannot hit your opponent. Medusa out makes it so you can't hit them. The out, you think it burns some mana, but really it doesn't do enough damage. And Medusa does very well against OD in lane because OD simply runs out of mana. Mm. Especially a, a CM or a Medusa. I, mm. I really like this Medusa pick. Good point. Prediction time, comrade. Start with you. You know, I think I'm going to have to go with TNC on this one. Uh, they look, like I said, I, I've still... I've still uh, re reminded back on their group stage performance, and I do like this draft. Okay, I gotta go to T go with TNC too. Gotta go back to the NA roots of Omni OD, <laughs> unstoppable. <laughs> okay, I was gonna go with TNC until the Medusa pick. I honestly think the Medusa OD matchup is extremely good, and I just I love the pick this game. I don't think TNC have the damage for. Her. I'm gonna go with uh, Faceless. Okay, split decisions here on the panel. One for Faceless, two for TNC. Time to head into our third and final game of our first series 
of the day. And from one OD in the draft to another in the commentary panel. Enjoy game three. Thank you very much, Red Eye. And indeed, here we are back in Kiev and ready for the third and final game of this first series of the day. TNC versus Faceless. The draft's complete. I'm OD Pixel. I'm here with Cinder and Faceless going for something a little similar to what we saw in game one that they had success with. Black gets his Slark again. TNC, though, they, they, they're, they're doing something a little bit different. Game one was an absolute nightmare for them. They're trying something else against the Black Slark. Yeah, this time they actually were the team to first pick the Ogre that we saw dominate in the first game out of Faceless. So very curious to see if TNC can have the similar have a similar amount of success with it in this game. Uh, I actually really like their lineup. I think yeah. TNC's draft looks looks really great. It's, uh, I mean, it's got well, great five-man potentially. As soon as they start to pull together, having battle chance from the troll with himself, the OD, even the Venge throwing punches in, the Bloodlust, yep. the Omni backing up these heroes. It's if that comes together before the Medusa and the Slark get to a point. It's going to be very hard for faces to deal with that sort of pressure. OD is also a pretty okay hero against Medusa, I think. Just having that int steal is, is annoying for Medusa to deal with. It deals a lot of damage by just removing the mana pool of her. Of course, you are playing it into the Nyx of Ice Ice Ice, arguably maybe his best hero. This hero was respect banned against Faceless in previous tournaments. This time they are able to get it here. Uh, but yeah, this, I think these are perhaps for both teams, maybe the best draft they've had in the series. Yeah. I think both lineups look really solid. And uh, it kind of, I think to a large extent, comes down to how much this Ogre is able to do early on. If TNC can build an early advantage and just secure farm for their their troll and OD, who would like the game to go a little bit slow in the beginning so they can get a couple of key items up, um, then they should be able to hit a very nice timing around the mid game with this Omni Knight. Uh, the double saves, actually triple saves on their lineup, also very nice. Uh, XY forcing away Sam H here, so it's going to be double runes down here and double runes for TNC. But this this is something to look out for in this game. The triple save on TNC is really good. Swap, yes. Astral, and Omni Knight is uh, very, very nicely rounded up. I'll be interested to see what they do as well here with, with the lanes. I mean, TNC, for a start, they, they've moved Raven up to the top lane. And I, I'm wondering if they were doing that to try and get the lane against the Slark and really punish him uh, in that safe lane. But, but Faceless, they've actually moved Black down to the to the bottom. So I think this, would you say, is Faceless dodging what TNC wanted to do up top? Mm, what? I might have to wait a bit with that. Mid lane? Ooh, XY. I think very low here. Holding his aphotic shield the whole time so he can remove Ignite should it come out. Um, I don't actually know who's dodging who, to be honest. I I would say... Or actually, I do know. Faceless are dodging. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to face this troll with the slug. Yeah, it's a very, very bad lane matchup. But the reason I'm saying that is that the lane bottom isn't great either. Like, I think Slark will lose this lane as well to an Omni Knight. He's going to need help in either case, and that is one of the weaknesses of a Slark, is his very limited laning phase. Um, so I think TNC are actually pretty happy with this already. Just If they can play these lanes and not have their Omni Knight counter too hard, they will be probably possibly winning all three. Because it's interesting from, from Faces as well. You've got Nuts jungling in the enemy jungle. Yep. So uh, getting his early levels and, and taking away from maybe a, a potential area of the map that TNC may look to uh, in the early few minutes. And uh, indeed, as we saw the XY abandon sitting in the mid lane helping out Jabs. Um, get a strong start and indeed CS wise it's not actually really worked out. Cuckoo was fine with that pressure being applied to him as he still maintains the lead in these first couple of waves. Now Nuts and XY will turn down towards the bottom lane and uh, pretty much just as you were saying Black he needs help and he does need it to stick around him. I don't actually think they can kill this lane either. The the crystal made in a bad support is pretty awkward for this. Uh, sure, you've got a Frostbite and a Pounce, but Abaddon can't really deal reliable damage at all. And if Sam H gets a point in Repel, he's fine. It's the other hero they can go on is, it, is an Ogre. So, oh, okay. Maybe he's going to get a little help from the Centaur here, but yeah. Very nice damage. Tim's doesn't care at all. Well, care when three heroes show up. He'll move a bit to the side, but still, so far, so good for TNC. They're going to force Black away here nicely. Sam H will get this with a Purification, I would imagine. Oh, he's going for the lasso, right? Confidence. Going for the attack. Actually, XY here will need some help from my from Nuts. Taking a heavy and he could still just die here. They've still got the purification, bringing him down incredibly low. He has got an aphotic shield to rely on. And uh, we'll get out of the last minute. So trying to hold on to bait them as deep as possible. But even with that, that sort of attention being drawn, faces just don't have enough firepower to, to turn around and hit TNC back. Shrine up. <laughs> it's actually such a dumb lane. <laughs> on the ogre. 
Oh, lovely. So uh, how is it going around the rest of the map? This this bottom lane is an absolute stomp from TNC. Black has 5 CS to the 17 of Sam H. And honestly, I think Black could be doing a little bit better down here, but it is a really, really difficult matchup. Mid lane, Medusa going pretty much pretty much neck and neck here with Cuckoo. And top lane is also a win here for TNC. So very, very good start for them. Maybe as expected. If you look at the picks, they are slightly stronger at this stage of the game, at least. So want to build an advantage. The question is how Faceless really activate their Abaddon. He's kind of the, the question mark for me right now. This support Abaddon, how they bring this in in a meaningful way in the game this early on. Black will be Shockwave. That's annoying. He's going to go on Tim's here. Omni Knight can connect from the right. This could go really bad for Faceless. Yeah, Black realizes he backs away from Tim's to make sure that he doesn't get hit by the initial purification. That's why. We'll go for the chase down, but indeed Sam H comes through from the heel, keeps Tim's safe, and this lane... Very hard, as you mentioned, for, for faces to do anything about. Even with these three heroes here, they're, they're not getting the kills and they're really not securing the farm for Black. Still sitting on only seven CS at four minutes in. That's bad news for Slark. It's such a bad catch up hero. Very slow without levels and that early safe thing gold. That's why you generally pick Slark late in your draft when you identify that you can, first of all, protect him in your safe lane, and secondly, that he has good, good core matchups. But this troll pick kind of threw them off a bit. Oh, bottom lane, Sam H doesn't have mana for repel, actually. Overstate is welcome. This could be first blood, and it is. Finally pays off, catching the Omni on his own. No ogre in the neighborhood. And as you said as well, just getting a little too greedy with his positioning low on the mana front. Mid lane jab started to pressure in. Uh, Tim's asked the presence of the ogre in the mid lane now. Oh, this is an aggressive play top as well. Huh? Nice, we'll get away. But Raven and Ryo definitely putting on the pressure in this top lane as well, identifying that, okay, if you guys are playing three heroes in the bottom area, yep. we're not going to let your Knicks have a good time up here. Yeah, still, definite CS advantage for TNC across the map in these first five minutes. I mean, rotations from Faceless, that's, uh, that's going to be a question of where they can come through. We saw the one coming down onto the bottom, getting back and forth in a kill. Come for that again, will certainly be a little harder. Now that the Omni's got that extra level. And is back up to full health and full mana, pretty much. Top lane Raven and Rhea intercepting with the side pull. And right, making sure that Raven has all the space he wants in this top lane. 32 CS at the moment, top at the board. Ice 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 is getting the levels up it. Not a huge amount of farm. But we will certainly see oh, this very good level 6 timing. No stone gaze just yet. He's level 5. There's going to have to be support coming in here probably for jabs. We'll force a TP from Omni. Yeah, with XY coming through, not possible that jabs can be gone on fully. And uh, this is this is certainly going to be something that, that will be powerful uh, in regards to the way that TNC are going to want to make a move around as a group in the mid game. The fact that they do have this capability of keeping the Dusa uh, alive almost certainly long enough to get the Stone Gaze off successfully. That's why. And Nuts looking to chase down for more, but Tim's realizing the Frostbite already utilized. Nothing else that they can. TP straight out. Mid lane jabs going deep with the dive. And it's almost certainly going to pay off. One more touch. No, the Fairy Fire. Keeps Cuckoo alive, Jabs, up to the high ground, desperately searching, does have the illusion as well uh, from XY, giving him the vision, nice play from XY, making sure that the illusion remains, searching for OD, giving Medusa the view to get that final shot in. 20 move speed advantage made the world of difference there, Medusa is a very slow hero with boots, I was wondering like, how, how is he killing the OD, OD doesn't have boots yet, simply ran him down. 315 to the 335 of Jabs, and if you chase far enough, you're going to get an extra hit in. And top. that is the huge kill for them. Like th for these lanes are still, that. yeah, like, lanes are still not looking good. But Jabs is at least having a pretty good game with that kill, especially top of the net worth with Phase. Not the easiest lane for OD to play anymore. Now. It wasn't easy in the first place. I look towards uh, Cuckoo. Nuts is thinking about it. Yeah, they've got the vision on him and with that newly found Phase boots. They could bring the Deucer over. It, it is quite deep to play, though. And not to the least, will sap up the experience. I think he's trying to steal this with a Crystal Nova, actually. Just okay. Not, not going to reveal himself. Well, I'm in lane. 
And now the wraparound, in Here's fact, is going to be coming for TNC. Jabs has to be careful, has yet to put a point in that stone gaze. He's got a good amount of mana shield, but four heroes will be coming in on the mid lane. Purification on Cuckoo, along with the repel, keeps him strong. They look towards Jabs. The Fulling Shield comes out in time. Isn't going to be enough to save the juice of TNC. Take down Jabs, and they look towards XY as well. And of course, nowhere near the level six as of yet uh, eight minutes in. A baton will also fall. TNC securing some big plays in the mid lane. Good rotations. They TP in the, uh, or rather the Omni Knight immediately to save the OD. And at that point, this fight is just over. They didn't even use Battle Trance. I don't know if he had it yet, Raven, but TNC certainly looking poised to building a big advantage in this game. And similar to previous games, it's just something we haven't really touched so much upon is the, the, the core combination of, of Faceless with this Slark plus Medusa. It's, it's pretty slow. Slark, yeah, really Slark is. is a fast hero with a free early game, but if he doesn't have it, he's very slow. Top lane, ice, ice, ice. No way Sentry he gets out. Down. But no, absolutely. It's, it's something that, that TNC has sort of the opposite of. Definitely a lineup that, that gets off the ground and much quicker. Can start picking objectives, taking towers, something that you look up to faceless. I mean, they've, they've got in a pattern, and that's nice for the push. Jabs until a certain point isn't really going to have a huge amount of damage. It's a lot slower pace than what TNC can play. Not just dead. Sungay's might oh, just save maybe it. not. Yeah, Jabs with a pretty little clutch ultimate play. Will it be enough time? No. Oh. Cuckoo gets in just a millisecond before the TP is successful with the astral top lane Tims. He will TP out. But yeah, good attempt from Jabs to, to try and go for the cheeky save. It's going to mean there's this bit of time, what, 70 seconds without Stone Gaze available. So Jabs does have to be a, a little more careful in that mid lane for this minute. And they also lose the safe lane tower minute nine here, faceless. This could be a nice wraparound onto Black. He has Shadow Dance. And uh, he's certainly going to have to use it to res escape. And of course, no AoE control between the two. Will allow Black to get back to safety. Quick to none of the room from Jabs, making sure that Omni is not able to get his hands upon it. I'm really surprised that Faceless haven't lane swapped in this game. I, as, as bad as this troll matchup could be, I still think it would have been a better choice overall for Faceless to get Black in the top area. Not necessarily to lane all the time, but so he has access to a jungle. Like, he's level 7 and he's not jungling with a Talon. I think going down here is not the right choice, just flat out. It's not efficient enough. If he gets this pick, it's nice. What a great swap yeah, from Ryan. Ryan making sure he's not clipped by Black with the swap out, dragging the Ogre in. Was actually get him sound. totally fine. That was the perfect swap. It was almost yeah. frame perfect. It was right after he got pounced, so that the ogre he swapped in did not get pounced instead. Smart very, stuff. Very nicely done from Ryo there. Raven's actually moved himself now down to the bottom lane. An immediate reaction from my size size as he heads down with the vendetta. Still very half in to set something up. Wants to get the career, but it's too fast. I feel like this this play kind of needs to work for Faceless, else they're losing even more ground. I mean, who do they got? These are two pretty beefy cores and a core Did support. Mid tower. This is one of the advantages of having Medusa against OD is that Medusa just keeps pushing out the wave all the time, putting a lot of pressure, and OD isn't very good at it in comparison. So well, this Nick stun is gonna miss from. My size, size, he had to break his vendetta, it was expiring anyway. Black has the Talon, so into the camps he goes. He's <laughs> to find the jungle. Oh, that was kind of Did he steal that with the Fire Blast? No, he tried. Oh, he tried. Fire Blast <laughs> deals like no damage in the first place, and then there's two <laughs> magic resistance auras. Well, yeah. for sure. Midas now complete for Cuckoo. So we'll start to see that OD climb his way back up towards the top. Very close at the moment between... Well, the four highest cores are actually at the moment. Uh, three of them are indeed on TNCs. Black still with quite a bit of catching up to do to get himself up there. And also Ice 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 as well. Really going to be relying on hitting off some successful rotations with the Nix Assassin top lane, Sam H. He's nearly just outplaying XY here. In fact, he's getting the kill. The level 11 Omni Knight at 12 minutes in just just destroyed that Abaddon. There was no hope for him. Poor old, poor old XY. He's, he's still not got his level 6 yet. The level 11 Omni Knight outplayed the level 5 Abaddon. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> Bottom lane. Unbelievable. TNC smoked up, ready to look for more. Black is going to be the focus from this rotation. 
Yeah. It's still a little slippery catch. Actually, towards the mid. Cuckoo spotting out ice, 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 ice. Rotating with the vendetta, but the century was still down. By Sam H. Swap back onto Black. Is the chain stun going to be there? Still to lock down this lock. TNC just feel way stronger in the game right now. It's yeah. The team fight potential to a faceless is pretty weak. They lost their lanes. So what do you really fall back on? All you can do is adapt to. Got the mid tower, got the kill. But can't really do it all. But stun all swap from Ryo trying to go for some fancy little play to save Sam with five heroes closing in on him. The Omni will go a lot of time for faceless. They get about 700 gold for this kill, but I think they use two or three TPs, five heroes rotated for a long time. All in all, not enough really to to give them any sort of meaningful advantage out of that play. If you look at the graphs, you know, it's, I mean, it's one kill, right? His but mind just was off cool. There's no dip. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Value lost <laughs> for, the, the, for the only night. As far as the game plan of TNC, it's progressing very nicely still, though. The cores are still farming. And I, I, when, it, when it comes to later on in this game, Black has to step up his game immediately when he gets the Shadow Blade. I don't think he's in a position here where he could just keep farming and expect Heroes can win a fist fight against can each other. Face to punish this. It's going to be quite a quick Roshan with the troll. They are in the neighborhood. Ice, ice, ice. Finds Cuckoo outside of the pit. Freezing field thrown straight down. They'll eliminate the OD. And that's enough to spook TNC. Great pick. For faces to find. To stick around for it with one of their men off the map. And face this to really good job of, of throwing TNC off their momentum there with that pickoff. This is a downside of going Midas first on OD as well. Um, often we see ODs choosing between going double null into four staff. Uh, rare occasions we see uh, the Veil of Discord. It's not that common anymore. But if you go for this Midas, you extend the period in which you're very susceptible. The four staff is extreme value on that hero in order to just disengage and get in a better position. Without that, Easy kill for Faceless on him, and that is probably the biggest kill they found all game. Yeah, definitely. Taking that OD down. Was up there in the top ranks of value this game so far. And he is gone. Raven, phase SMY, 7k net worth on the troll. Black, still trying his best to catch up. He's just about to hit the 5k mark, and Shadow Blade, a couple of hundred gold away. So all eyes on Black once he picks that up to make things happen. It, it certainly feels like he's not going to be able to make things happen on his own. He needs to be moving around with Vice Size Size because there's no way that with a Shadow Blade he can he can go on any of these members of TNC. They can normally save themselves, they're going to be too tanky, or there's going to be someone else behind them being incredibly disruptive. Yeah. It's tricky for him because of how late this is, because, you know, in, in some cases, uh, maybe he can solo the Ven. I think Ogre is... I guess, yeah, Rai is probably the closest yeah. to, yeah, to I, being soloable. I, I, he, can, he can kill the range, I think. Yeah. But no one else. Um, and what I was touching upon earlier is this, this matchup against Troll is kind of awkward in the sense that, you know, if when Troll uses Whirling Axes, you can remove it with Dark, with dark Pact. Pact sure. But vice versa, if you've used Dark Pact, this Troll Blind completely it, it ruins your hero. You. And of course, it's a low cooldown on the Dark Pact, but there still is that moment of downtime where... When these two heroes fight against each other, if you get bashed up by Troll, he can also just, you know, cleave through you. He's a hero that isn't scared of man fighting you, so you need to use your cooldowns very well because Troll himself can force you to Dark Pack in the first place by using Axes. And then if you take the, the man fight after that, you need to be careful with not just getting bashed out and not even getting your ult yeah. and, uh, and it's even the same kind of going against Rai. If he's managed to get a few one charges up and you go on him, you have to almost certainly Shadow Dance early. Because if he gets the chance to turn a Magic Missile, yeah, then it's there's going to be time for, for the turnaround or for him to just get himself out of there initially. Uh, and if you if you do Shadow Dance early to get the kill, 
by the time you've killed him, there'll be someone there to punish you, and then you don't have the Shadow Dance to escape. Or maybe you do get the kill, but if you've used Shadow Dance and your other cooldowns yeah. to kill the VS, that doesn't even mean you win the fight. I guess. Yeah, absolutely not. So it, it's, 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 it's a just hard, hard game for, it's, the, for this lock. It's difficult to play Slark in this game right now, I think. Very, very difficult. Uh, the, the, the player on the Dire side who probably has the easiest time right now is the Medusa, because it's yeah. pretty it's pretty clear cut out. Just walk around, get this farm. As long as you have information about what heroes are, you can, you can do that. But uh, the heroes who need to bring Faceless back into this game are the Slark and the Nyx, but it's it's just difficult for them to, to find fights that they would be even slightly favored in. CNC sink their way back into the pit. XY will head over to have oh, a look here, but Roche is already as well down. Here. Yeah, XY. They'll put the borrowed time immediately. Jabs is going to move forward. Does have a stone gaze if he wants to use it to try and save XY. XY will have a sanity to close draw straight down onto his head. He falls. Cuckoo now in trouble though. Will get stone gazed up. Black with the rotation. Pods the Aegis immediately. Brings down OD once. GA comes out, but not quick enough to save Raya. Raya's out and down. Can they kill the OD a second time? Black still trying to work his way into him. Will be held back by an Astral, but the Crystal Nova slows there. Cuckoo being slowed down, trying to get his way out. Jump forth from Black as he passes out of the pit. The Dark Pact just in range. Great play from Black to close the gap. Will secure the kill. And Slark turning up just when he needed to. We talked about Black needing to have a high impact. You can't get higher than that. You just fought a team that was ahead of you. After they got Roshan and an Aegis, you pot the Aegis, and then you kill their OD. Yeah, that was pretty good from, from Faceless with the conditions they had. I thought that was actually going to turn into a complete disaster for them. The OD got to hit the Abaddon four, five, six times during his ultimate, so a lot of int stolen right away. But then he just dropped, and it only hit the uh, Abaddon. I think it might have clipped the Medusa as well. I'm not okay. sure, but it, the OD ulti, I think, just wasn't good enough in that fight. Um, it's one of those situations where OD has two choices. He can banish the Abaddon during his ulti and you just outlast the duration and then you know where you have him. But then you've used your banish and then you don't have it. So I think spamming Arcane Orbs out on the Abaddon there is the right choice. But they, they didn't really manage to get the follow through that they were looking for. And at the end of the day, I believe Troll did not have Blink in that fight. I was, that was just what I was going to look for. Do they have any mobility I items? I definitely didn't. Definitely didn't. He just picked that up. Yeah. They, they couldn't follow through. OD was in this awkward position, and the Omni Knight ulti also didn't save the Venge. She died really early. Uh, speaking of death, that is a dead Nyx. Oh. Oh, uh, no. Oh, he's got the... He's going to get out. Oh, my... No, oh. no, no. Oh. <laughs> Kill yourself. No, the stick one charges. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> no. Right no. Oh. If he got out of that one... Oh. He made them work for it, Ice Ice wow. Ice. But it, it does indeed end up going down. That was that was quite the moment. Wow. So close to getting away. Mid tower is going to fall here. Yeah, definitely something that you cannot underestimate. Even with losing that OD, losing the Aegis, the pushing power of TNC. Still very much at a strong point ben at this stage of the game. Looks interested in swapping. Oh, they changed their minds. Uh, I'll go here. Back off, play, play a bit slower again. They still some good yeah. pickups coming out. Sam H uh, has the Greaves complete for the next push up and uh, group up from TNC. Um, Medallion, of course, going to be the item of focus for the Venge this game. And yeah, after that first big item of the Midas into Dragon Lance, now looking to finish off the Hurricane Pike on Cuckoo, and uh, we're certainly saving some of these tricky situations. Uh, we'll get to see the replay here. Uh, Vital Sice's fancy footwork. The first spike carapace doing wonders as it catches both with the ignite that still That is proccing. such a fast reaction on the stun, by the way. Instantly gets the perfect angle. Oh, and the dust. Oh, oh, the one half a second on the dust. And the one just comes off cooldown, but carapace. Raven, with the blink that we talked about picking up, <laughs> enables him to get the shutdown and the catch off. Very close. But anyway, this this game's actually evened out. So yeah. the early game for Faceless looked really, really bad, and uh, they managed to salvage it pretty nicely. They're starting to find the farm. Sark got involved in the couple of fights that he could, so Black is is back into this. He's still a bit behind the other cores, but it's uh it's within reach now. It's it's just that both teams have kind of their their net worth uh, a little differently uh, distributed. You, you look towards TNC as these three cores very much at the top, but over on the side of Faceless, uh, in terms of the specifically the support capacity, this Abaddon looking a lot bigger than either of the two supports that TNC have at this stage. So. Yes. So splitting up the resources uh, a little differently on Faceless's side. And uh, what, what, what was the abandoned XY going to be able to pick up with that way? The completed mech and him himself also looking for the medallion. So 
definitely, considering the way that TNC play, the fact that they have these these two picks on an XY, uh, it's, it's could make the difference in these team fights. Absolutely, it's it's one of the issues that you can run into when you run a support duo like Ogre Venge is that neither neither hero really. I mean, Venge can farm if you play it that way. I just don't think that's the way Ryo plays for TNC. And the playmaker in Tim's is playing Ogre. Ogre doesn't farm. <laughs> he makes everyone else farm. So as a result, those two supports are definitely falling pretty far behind. And that puts a lot more pressure on TNC's course. If there's missteps in the fights from the course, it's way more costly when the supports can't really compensate for you. Whereas you look over to face this, like you mentioned, the Abaddon can have a big impact. Relatively. Top lane at the moment. Tower Faces gone. deciding to simply avoid this sort of pressure. It will be a free tier two, almost certainly for TNC as they power in on the top. Uh, Faces actually looking for a bit of a, a, a trade in terms of pushing. They have a couple of heroes that managed to move the mid lane to creep wave right back to the tier two of TNC. And bottom lane, they will end up claiming. So they get themselves the trade, Faceless. I think Faceless are happy with trading towers just because they open up the map. Opening it up on both sides will probably in this game favor them a bit more since they have the catch of both Stark and Nyx. So they, if they can open up so they can push the lanes split and force TNC back, that's when they get the opportunity to find these pickoffs that their lineup wants to play for but hasn't really been able to for 25 minutes so far. I wonder if anyone will be able to grab their hands on that DD rune down bottom. Be very nice to make a play with bottom lane. Nice size, nice, nice, just for a bit of harassment. Onto Raven has his own blink complete now as well. Next item will be looking towards the Yule Scepter. And Cuckoo with the Hood of Defiance, making sure it's a little trickier for, for some of these central counter picks to burst him down. The, the Nyx Assassin in particular. And Mana Burn can certainly pack a punch if you are lacking the magic resist. It's not that common to see this picked up by OD. Do you think it is, is that because of the Nyx? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be. He can at least I mean, block one mana burn with the barrier. Is it just, I mean, what? why the hood and say over the BKB? For That's the question. Yeah. It's a bit unusual it's here. I, I, don't, I think BKB actually has really high value, but maybe he felt like he needed something temporarily. He needs something now uh, to help him yeah. stay strong in the fight. Maybe he's relying a bit more on the repel rather than going the BKB route for that reason, since Troll is getting one. He has it in a moment. So Sam H's designated target will be the OD protecting him. Oh, Black needs to get out of there. And the okay, he used to. Yeah, there's no way to control him with, for uh, that sort of play. Yeah, they actually have nothing on their lineup at all. Yeah. Again, Not it's another situation where the Slark has been picked, and TNC went with the idea of, uh, of having this high pressure that they can try and push into him before he gets to a certain point. When he does get to this point that arguably Black has, the, the lockdown again, it's not there. Where Where's your catch for the Slav? They it's, just, it's still... I mean, it may, you've got, as you said earlier, you've got a lot of ways to get the target that Slark's going on away from, make it very hard for Black to finish off the job with an instant jump in. Um, and I guess that's what you've got to abuse to just try and prolong the fight so that his spells are, are used and, and suddenly you can hit back at him. But... You can it's still tricky to jump in and take the Slark out of the fight. You can pretty quickly force him to use Shadow Dance. Yeah. And after that, it's difficult to come back in when you're playing against these heroes. If OD gets to hold his ultimate the whole time, the Sanity's Eclipse deals a lot of damage on Slark. Uh, of course, Black has gone for a somewhat decent stat build with having the 10 int from the Saber and the 15 from the Silver Edge. So that's 25 int going his way, which is nice. But over extended periods of time in these fights, OD will just be a problem. Let's put it that way. Um, so... Yes, it is great for Slark that there's not so much catch, especially from the farming perspective, that he feels a lot safer in that regard. But even if Slark gets big in this game, I feel like the, the TNC team do have options to kill him off in fights. They have all this damage that over the extended fights probably will, will be good enough for them. The BKB is popped. He's going to go for Ice 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 here. The troll, good bash. The jab's getting in position for the Stone Gaze to proc, not in time before the kill comes through. This could be a problem for Jabs as well. Yeah, with the bleak chase down, Raven's ready to look for more. No PKB. XY trying to come on across to help, but a brilliant swap from Ryo, bringing Jabs away from any sort of possible help that Faces could offer him. Huge for TNC. Should be a mid tower. Uh, they will lose their top tower to Black. He's doing the best he can at this moment in time. Getting that right there. OD is showing up. Black's like, see you later. Shadow Dance TP out. 
yeah, Faceless will not defend this tower. No point in even trying. Uh, this is going to be a freebie. A TNC. I mean, if you're TNC, do you think you want to be pushing up to the high ground pretty soon uh, against this this lineup, or or can you afford to, to get a couple more items on Raven, say, build him up uh, to another sort of power spike? I think most importantly, you don't throw your lead away. Um, that's that's what they need to do. Going high ground is dangerous without Aegis in general. I think in this game, is, this game is no different. Yes, they have saves, but things can go wrong, and I don't think their advantage is big enough to go for the high ground push. So rather, I would like to see them take the bottom tier to uh, get the Roshan, which is spawning very soon. That they can start trying to push with just sending in the troll. I think you only let troll hit the tower, and OD stands back, Venge stands back, and then you have both the swap and the astral to try to save him. That's the good news for them, is there's no repositioning abilities on Faceless. No, like, Hook or Four Staffs. I think they don't have just yet. Nyx is going Yules, so not coming out for him. But yeah, TNC, pretty comfortable position here. I think this Roche will eventually be theirs. Main thing they need to be wary of is Stone Gaze. See if their side of Faceless are aware of this at all. There'll be a scan from TNC. They know that Faceless are closing the gap, so a nice scan to give them the information that they need to play it safe. And they will retreat out the pit for the time being, knowing that Faceless are interested in this area of the map. Bottom lane, yeah, Black just knocking on the tier three. Tims has had to head down bottom. Now actually with that, knowing that they brought at least the Ogre down there, Faceless themselves now sneak into the pit. So a, a great little play from the from, from Slark. Right, we'll see if TNC want to contest this. They're coming back across. But Roshan's falling fast. XY, he just finished off the Solar Crest. And with that, face this. Take Roshan down right underneath the noses of TNC. And they're ready to try and look for some action. Immediate swap from Raya to try and keep Cuckoo safe. Forces his way back up to the high ground. And it looks like he will be able to create enough of a gap to keep himself safe. But that split pressure from Black into that immediate play from the rest of the team ends up paying off big for Faceless. This was very nicely done by Faceless. Textbook stuff. You feel like the enemy team is rushing, you go and scout it and get them scared with the Mantis style coming in. And of course, maybe a blessing in disguise for them that TNC actually scanned them out. Uh, they got they got scared earlier than they had to and backed out of the pit. I don't know if they could have completed it, but regardless, it was the correct idea from Faceless, sending in the Mantis, loose, getting information, Black's pushing bottom, any TP down, they get a 5 on 4 in the pit, and get the Roche. And you might say it's just an Ogre who isn't there. It's like, can they fight without the Ogre? Maybe. But I think it's difficult. And in addition to that, it's not just Ogre not having the stun there or the Ignite or whatever. The, the Bloodlust running out is a big deal. Like, yeah. These heroes you are need it. like a lot stronger with Bloodlust. It's so big on OD and Troll to have this ability running. And the duration of it isn't long enough that Ogre can just TP bottom it. Then it's 30 second duration. It's not long enough. Oh, what do you think about this, uh, this from Raven? So going for the butterfly now after the BKB, grabbing himself a some evasion. I mean, I, in that sense, I, I, there's going to be no MKB or Bloodthorn for sure anytime soon on faces. So he'll uh, certainly be that little bit more survivable on the front lines uh, for these sieges that uh, potentially around the corner for them. I'm wondering if it's better than Scotty this game. I don't think he really needs Flutter. He's going to be max move speed almost all the time with Bloodlust. He's already 500 or whatever. Uh, with that running 508. And phase boots, bling. His mobility is very high, so the Flutter for that purpose isn't that useful. So it's about the evasion versus the raw stats of Scotty. I think most trolls in this situation favor the Scotty just so they can stay on their target and keep the stacks of fervor running. But obviously has its merits to go for a butterfly when you're playing against two physical damage cores. The issue is Medusa doesn't mind going MKB. It's it's generally yeah. a, an item the hero likes to pick uh, pick up regardless. So Yeah, especially I guess now she's got that Scotty complete. She's, yep, she's got a kind of big base stats built up. Mm -hmm. Damage is going to be the route that she'll look for next. I think Jabs would like to go MKB. It, it might be one of the items he's considering. When he sees this butter, it's a no-brainer. Like that's, that's just going to be the choice. Especially Venge wants to build Solar Crest as well. MKB on Dusa is should be next on the menu here. Oh, and he's actually he's actually changed it up, Joel. Um, as you suggested, you know the more right, common, Scotty, he's yeah. going for the Scotty. Oh, top oh, lane, Cuckoo getting OD. caught out. Black's gonna be there with a the lead in. Immediate repel will protect the OD from the pounce through Black, trying to stay on his target, but the GA is there and OD forces out. Stone gaze as well for Jazz, making sure the TNC can't reinitiate. Iso size connects with the stun onto the Omni Knight. Good Astro from OD. Buy some time for Sam H. It's going to be enough. Still has the purification. The swap as well from Ryo. 
Some very tight play for TNC, keeping everyone alive and getting them safely back to the base. I say that though, Tim still has been caught out. He's out of mana. Oh. Well, it looks like they tried to reinitiate after faces came out, and that will cost Ryo's life. This Medusa is a really big problem. It's the reason TNC can't fight. It's countering the troll very, very hard. He wants to go in, gets just gets stone gazed and forced away. They can't really go on any targets. TNC, great defensive place to stay alive. And one thing they need to be wary of on that faceless is that Cuckoo is starting to get a lot of intelligence right now. So far stolen 24. They will connect the stun. Black seeing if he finds an opportunity to jump in. Immediate fire blast for Tim's. Just the two times multicast. TNC looking at their best to hold. Cuckoo with the hurricane pike. In going his way as he grabs it for jabs. 36. They could go for a smoke now if they wanted. He has it for quite a while. About a minute left on at least 20 of this intelligence. Not sure how big a fan I am of this rod of Atos this game of the OD. I would still really like to see him go BKB. I know you're playing with an Omni Knight, but Repel is not what he used to be. Like this, it's a seven second duration, which is definitely very good. But then you're relying on Omni Knight being in range to cast it. You can't use it exactly when you want. If your read on the fight is different, you know you, you want to take the initiative, just get in. Of course, you can make a case against it because of Stone Gaze, but I eventually, I feel like he will need to get it at some point. Oh, Tim's may have got a bit greedy here. Was looking to put a bit of harassment down onto Black, but Ice 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 was there with the punish. At the same time, though, Cuckoo will blow up nuts, but he did drop the Sanity's Eclipse for that one, Sin, so that, that's now gone for two and a half minutes. Yeah, I think you're happy with that if you're faceless, this trade-off. No. One for one on supports, Ogre is down. I think right now he's more important in the game than the Crystal Maiden is. No Bloodlust on TNC, no Sanity's Eclipse on TNC. They do lose the Aegis, but I still think Faceless can think about this at least, going for this high ground tower. Yeah, no Sanity just seems like a huge deal. It's, they it need is. everything that they, they can Swap. get at this point to have the damage. Jabs will be swapped in, but immediately the Stone Gaze in reaction. Raven pops the BKB, has to retreat. Sam H. As well, there's no shrine in this area to heal by the Purifier. Raven turns back around, gets the slot, faceless, focusing the tier three. Fortification will come out. Cuckoo jumps forward, manages to get the Astral onto one. Raven jumps forward, looking for XY, but they have the ultimate still available. Black pops the Shadow Dance to BKB as well, focusing towards Sam H. He's starting to build up these Essence Shift stacks on the slot. Jazz falls back up the high ground. Raven continues to try and chase. Magic Missile connects, but the Solar Crest from XY laid down onto Jabs, keeping him alive for the time being. It's not enough. TNC have the damage to fight for the evasion. The Rod on Mix is and they picked up a third. Triple kill for Cuckoo. They're not quite done. They're looking for Black Black. Oh, he's stuck with a clip. But don't. With the freezing build, it doesn't matter. The CM is ripped to pieces in a couple of hits. They don't have vision on the high ground, though. Black will be safe for now. Oh, he needs to be so careful with jumping down. Did they see that? No, they didn't. He got away with it. But still, nonetheless, TNC, they may not have killed the Slark, but four massive kills. Great hold. And just great aggression from Raven, just blinking forward and chasing down on the front lines, locking onto targets. The Atos ends up working out, allowing both Raven and Cuckoo to beat into their opponents. It's basically a fight. It's like a game of bait and switch, right? You you jump in with a troll to force them to do so ulti, then you disengage. Then in turn, Faceless want to fight you inside your base. You get superior position, you turn around. Stone Gaze is on cooldown, Troll's BKB is on cooldown. What matters more? Probably the Stone Gaze right now, actually. Yeah. Because it allowed OD to go crazy in this fight. Simply with that being down, 72 install, and they took that fight. Remember, no Sanity's Eclipse in that no fight sanities, even. They didn't need it. If they had a Sanity's there, they, I mean, Slark would have been in a different place. Yeah. If they could have burned his mana before he's able to get up to the high ground, Bashir will be picked up from Black, but two buybacks forced out there, so absolutely perfectly done. And in a fight as well, where it looked like it was going all right for faces, Black was getting some good stacks off at the start. It was just the, the fact that both Raven and Cuckoo focus on jabs, bring him down so low at the beginning of it all. And then there's no way for Jabs to run his way out of there. Ice 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 tries his best with a good stun. But TNC, they've got this beef. They've got this five man just pure out brawn. The, the, ar the, struggle arcane, to stop. the arcane orb is, is very important in this game. It's, it's what making it difficult for Medusa. And you could consider going BKB to itemize against that. So you at least have those 10 seconds to fight in. But you really don't really want to do that. TNC smoke toward. They are not doing anything else with it, however. Let's see how, how long the cooldown is going to be on Roshan. Could be potentially up very shortly if it's a if it's a quick respawn. Yeah, face this. We'll have to be very very careful about how they they go around trying to break the high ground after that last attempt. Two minutes until Roche. 
something that both teams will definitely have a high interest in at this point. And Aegis uh, could definitely kind of com be converted into a set of racks at this stage for both lineups. Absolutely. It's in this weird state where I think you want Roche more so that the enemy team doesn't get the Aegis than that you get it. It's maybe slightly scarier for TNC if the Aegis goes faceless away, because that is a guaranteed tier 3 at the very least. And then they can disengage and take Shrine Control and play from there. TNC still need to get through more structural damage in order to reach that point. But this is going to be a stalemate for a minute and a half more than likely while this Roshan gets ready to come back to life. Let's have a look at big items coming up. So XY has more than half of his Aghanims on the Abaddon. Always a big item to look out for in late game scenarios. <coughs> Four Staff is the next item for Ice Ice Ice. I personally think you should have got it before the Yules in this particular game. Okay. Very nice item. Cuckoo just um, finished off his Hex. That's going to be pretty huge. Cuckoo got Hex. Massive yeah. item. Black oh, gets there we have the Hex. But in fact, you got the double. Oh. Oh. The Sanity's Eclipse from Cuckoo just destroys Black. He's down for 80 seconds. XY taken out as well. There'll be a buyback from the Slug. But that Sanity's if he has it, it just wipes Slark to the floor. 3k damage dealt in a matter of seconds by that OD. I think he got one Arcane Orb hit off. Or actually two. I think he got, swap, he got two. swap into Hex, but Black was very quick on the finger with uh, with Dark Pact. But those two attacks and the ult, 3k damage. Pretty good. Absolutely insane. Black has to be so careful around this OD. And yeah, as you said, Ryo has been playing some fantastic Vengeful Spirit here today. Uh, whether it be saving heroes or just throwing them right into the chaos of TNC's clutches. Black has to be careful now. Another death on this Slark will at least mean two sets of rags. They do still have the tier two bottom. So this five or six minutes or so of Black not having buyback may not be all over if he does go down. We'll see how safe faces want to play. It's very hard to, to punish TNC though at this time, especially you have a Roche back up. And TNC looking to go straight into the pit. There's a DD down bottom. If they just can find that and bring it over to the pit in time, it'll be pretty major. But Raven already in there and ripping this Roshan to pieces. They're starting to head over. Can they get there in time? Faceless looking for the opening. Goes for the TP out. There though, the BKP and the Jet protecting him. Ryo comes in with the same jump the pit, gets bashed up though by Black. Black starting to build up the stacks. Just the brutality of the follower, the slaughter from Faceless as they move on for another Black, ending the fight with 54 Essence Shift stacks. That is going to destroy the structures of TNC if they can't keep him off it. This Slark is going to do so much damage on this bush. They have to survive back with You can't do that against a slot that's building up more and more stacks. Ryo with the swap out will save Cuckoo for the time being, but Ryo's down. You just cannot go anywhere near this slot. Black, he's moving on for more. The bash is connected to Raven. Raven BKB is trying to run with the pounds forward after the magic mirror wears off. Black 83 and 4. This is the highest amount of SSG stacks I've ever seen. 84 stacks. How does that even happen? Black just going absolutely ham. The tier three's down in the mid lane. He turns towards the mid set of rags. It's. This slot oh. is off the charts. Level Whoa. 25. Black, look, he, he's, he's vibrating with power. The camera can't contain it. He's reached his final form. And they've taken a second set. Oh, they caught OD in the mid as oh, well. Look at his, look at the legs go. Oh, but Black, he's got to keep his cool. Will be jumped on. The BKB comes out. He backs away. Big, big, Can big Can they punish this TNC? They'll get one. 
Looking to move on for a second. Black and Jab's already on the retreat. Raven trying to get the catch. Can he find anyone? Black still with about 50 stacks to play with, but player safe, backs away. TNC, they only lose the CM on the way out of that. A massive, massive play for Faceless. That fight after the Roshan and the Aegis going the way of TNC. And this Slark, it's... That was so risky of TNC to come forward and try and defend that set of racks. They, they almost just had to let it go and, and not try and punish Faceless at that point of time where the Slark was so damn fat. They just had to use a lot of defensive cooldowns to save the OD who maybe played that one a bit too aggressively and then Definitely. the fight becomes very, very difficult for them to take. By the way, we've just had action for like three minutes straight. What happened to the cheese? I never saw it. I saw it drop and I didn't see either of the heroes in the pit pick it up. Did it get destroyed? I or think it might have been used in the first initial... By who? Aegis fight. I don't think... Did Troll use it? I, I mean, I didn't see it. I, I was oh, very... talking about the important things here. What happened to the cheese? <laughs> what happened, what to, the happened to the damn cheese? Don't worry, we'll get Reddit on it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we have some... It's the big question for the panel after this game. <laughs> big talking point. Some EDAM experts. What happened to some the Gouda? Gorgonzola gods. <laughs> some cheddar... That's a good nickname for David. Sherlock. Gorgonzola gods. Gorgonzola gods. Yep, I like it. Why, what's that got to do with gods? You call them Gorgonzola gods? What's that got anything to do with him? Oh, I like it. What is his association with cheese? Maybe Australia's a cheesy place. Oh, there goes the shrine. Let's see if they can run down TNC here. This looks like TNC are going to play the safe. Wise decision. This game is not over yet, by the way. Oh, it's not. There are I mean, they've not still called GG. buyback cooldowns. Good analysis. One minute on Slark. And what's that? Four minutes in troll, four minutes in OD. So actually only Slark with with Vivac cooldown on the Dire. Both Medusa and Nyx currently with the gold in their pockets to do it. And the supports more than likely won't have to do it. The Baton's actually really high level. He'll be dead for a while if he gets killed. Yeah. Level 21 closing in on that for him. But now the advantage massively stacked in Faceless's favor. The the Aghanim Scepter of Abaddon is going to become a really big problem because you've seen these fights, it's, it's so much about this, how much it does OD steal, how much agility does Slark steal, the fights go really, really long. If they can just go on the OD and force him to not attack, I don't think any of their heroes are going to die to troll when they have this Abaddon ulti. So they're pretty much free to do whatever they want during that full duration. But what a... What a crazy game this has been. Uh, There's been a lot I mean, of surprises that, throughout this yeah. this mid-game, the later stage of the game. Uh, I mean, what, what a series it's been as well. Very much up and down. Every game, very different how it, it sort of played out. Both teams having very clear strengths in just different areas of play and, and play style. And uh, here in this third one, sort of clash at the culmination of both at the team's peak performance. TNC certainly on the back foot, but we've seen what they've been able to pull out. You know, earlier team fights, not only this game, but in this series where they have been behind, but still they have managed to out-coordinate the plays of Faceless.
how much intel he can build up from Jabs Medusa at the moment because of that solo oh, Good start. There's the stunning. We'll get the hex off in return in time. Force back from TNC. There's the Hurricane Pike onto Black. A little bit more stun. Now Cuckoo jumps forward with a battle charge. Jabs quick with the stone gaze. They've taken down the melee racks. Black jumps forward onto the Ogre. Looks for the easy kill. Now turns towards Cuckoo who does end up getting broke by the stone gaze. There's a lot of damage being racked up by Black once again. They'll turn towards their next target. Ryo falling down quick and fast. That's the Venge down and down. There'll be a bite back from Ogre. Black now moves forward. Gets the pounce onto Cuckoo. There'll be a defensive Astral. But Tim's forced back to the base. Samage, one more purification onto himself. It's not enough to save his teammates. Odie's down for 110 seconds. He does have buyback available. He's not utilizing it quite yet. What can Raven do with his MKB? He'll jump forward. Has the back of a Samage. But all oh, the loads to sort of again, making sure the Yoga ends up stunning himself. Black, absolutely lovely. GG is called. Black and the boys have done it. Faceless. Take the series 2-1. And they'll be moving forward. Some excellent performances from the team. Black having two fantastic games on the slot. And at the end of the day, TNC just couldn't pull through with what they were able to do in game two once again here in game three. What a series and what a performance from Faces. Speaking of Black, it's nice to see in this game that I think a while back, Black was struggling a lot with uh, not getting free farm, not having a good early game, like getting contested, getting countered, and it would start hemorrhaging kills, starting to lose control of the game. This game, he plays with one death after having a completely abysmal laning stage, awful matchup, completely out farmed, just slowly finds whatever he can, plays a great game on the Slark, in my opinion, at the end of the day. And uh, Faceless, do pull through. Wasn't the easiest game. Absolutely not. Wasn't the cleanest game either. No. But they got the job done. I think going forward for Faceless, the what they need to think about is more of a strategic nature than the teamwork. I, the, the second game arguably may be a bit on the sloppy side when it came to coordination in the lineup, but also just strategically, the the games from them were were a bit awkward in 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 the drafting with getting behind in the early game. In this game, for example, individual performances bring them back, but this game could have been super hard for them. They could have yeah. lost this game at at the. 30 minute mark. Yeah, I definitely. Think. We, we saw kind of that early mid game where yeah. TNC were, were doing these fantastic maneuvers, catching faces off guard. But yeah, I mean, that one point where Black just had that, that insane fight, racking what, 84 essence. I don't stats. think I've seen That's, more than that ever. That, that is just <laughs> an insane amount mode, to build anyway. up. It's just not, normally you're not allowed to. You know, they, they, they get out of there or, or they just simply die. But yeah. at the end of the day, the self sustain that TNC had at that point just worked against them because it allowed Black to, to build up that much damage, that much agility.